Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, all refreshed for this new week of classes. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, Samuel, is it okay if you can lead us in prayer, please? Sure, Pastor. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your abundant grace, um, your blessings, your calling for our lives. We dedicate this time and ourselves into your hands. We dedicate your servant, Pastor Paul Emmanuel, into your hands. We dedicate today's lesson as we learn about uh, marketplace ministry, as we learn about how do we manage ourselves in work, what does your word tell us, how do we... Uh, manage leadership, how do we manage ourselves, uh, give us the wisdom, the insights uh, to know your will, your word, uh, and your guidance for us. This and everything we ask in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Samuel. Amen. All right. Uh, so last week we looked at chapter 13 on leadership and uh, uh, some of the important points, I'll just share this and then we'll get into the next chapter. Uh, we looked at how, as leaders, if we don't see the vision, we won't be able to lead other people there. Uh, Jesus himself said, uh, uh, the blind cannot lead the blind. So as leaders, we must have something in our minds or, or, or that vision should be ahead, a picture of what you want to see, maybe yourself or even the organization. Uh, you know, in a couple of years time or so. So uh, it's always good to have that uh, in our mind as leaders. Then we looked at maintaining proper heart attitudes, right? We can have the vision, we can have a wonderful call of God upon our lives. Uh, uh, but in spite of all that, we can fall if we don't have the right heart attitude. So we looked at three uh, attitudes. One was servanthood. Lord Jesus was the epitome of, of you know, this whole aspect of servanthood. He, he led by example. Uh, he said, I've come to serve and not to be served, right? And two, we looked at uh, passion, a passion to, uh, uh, you know, a leader should have a passion uh, expressed in enthusiasm, uh, passionate about the work or, or the ministry that he is doing, he or she is doing. Uh, and so that's very important. Proverbs says, don't burn out, meaning don't let that, uh, you know, fuel, that furnace or that fire inside, let it not burn out, keep fueling it, right? And the third one we looked at was self-control. Uh, as leaders, we must be self, we must have self-control now, uh, Especially with the fact that, you know, as leaders, nobody's checking up on us. Uh, nobody's going to, you know, for example, if you're a pastor or, you know, a youth leader, uh, not many people are going to check up on you, but uh, we must hold certain standards. We must uh, be able to look at our work, look at our productivity, look at our own personal lives and make sure uh, that we are not uh, going away from the word of God. And so uh, we looked at many other points, uh, demonstrate and emphasize, be real, be down to earth. Our attitude is what is important. Uh, we must make sure that uh, we have the right attitude. Uh, you know, another important point we looked at was as leaders, we must first act, uh, First, meaning we must first do things and then expect our team members to do it, right? Uh, uh, and give honest feedback. Now, this is a very interesting point because especially in ministry, sometimes we feel, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to give this person this feedback. What if they feel bad? What if they don't take it the right way? What if they leave the church or leave the ministry? Um, I personally had those thoughts initially, right? What if I uh, give them this feedback and they don't take it the right way? What if they don't come back to church? Uh, you know, so many times I held back, but I realized one thing uh, over the course of uh, time and, you know, studying God's word, learning, I realized that when our identity is in Christ, you know, it is God who brings people to us. It is the Lord who brings, uh, adds numbers to the church, right? And, and yes, there will be times we have to give honest feedback. Right now, especially in ministry, if we don't do it, uh, 
what will happen is it'll, we'll be in a place where there's unproductivity. There we'll be in a place where, you know, we're just letting things go by or programs and events and work is just going by and we're not seeing any productivity. So we will be at fault as leaders. So it's very important to give honest feedback. There will be people who will take it the right way. There'll be people who will get really offended. Uh, but but be assured that it's good to give honest feedback. Uh, correction and feedback should be timely as well, right? So uh, we need to understand how to give feedback and at the right time in the right way, right? Uh, then we also looked at guarding uh, uh, against, uh, you know, uh, complacency. Uh, I do, I'm not sure if I've gone to this point where we, uh, the point where we stay away from women and wine. Uh, now, great leaders have gone up the ladder and uh, with a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. Uh, but these two things can bring leaders down. Uh, women and wine. Now, for, for women, it could be men and wine as well, right? So uh, guard against these two. Right. If you're married, stay faithful. Uh, always maintain a healthy relationship, a healthy distance uh, from other women. Uh, now, it it may sound like you know, okay, why are we talking about this? But these are important things, uh, uh, and and it's very sad f uh, to hear of ministries around us where these wonderful leaders have grown up and you know they've they've done a wonderful established a wonderful ministry uh but because of you know uh, wrong relationships and uh women in the community or or, or even uh, alcohol and the you know uh, pleasures of this world they, they've indulged in it maybe just to try it out but it has you know backfired on them and uh, uh you know it has really brought the ministry to a whole uh, you know, I would say a whole standstill, and this is very dangerous. And uh, there will be times, there will be, you know, if you're in the corporate sector, there will be times of social drinking. You know, you're going for a team meeting, everyone are drinking. You can always drink, uh, a, you know, a, a, be a beverage. Right? Uh, now, people may mock you, people may laugh at you. Hey, what, what is this? You're not even drinking, uh, you know with us, you're not enjoying with us, we are in a team outing, your wife's not here, your children are not here, why don't you just have a drink? Um, stay away from it, right? Uh, uh, choose probably a non-alcoholic beverage and drink, it's all right, right? Uh, but don't go down that path, uh, especially especially times of, uh, you know, when, there's, when you feel vulnerable, uh, let me give you some examples. There's this one time we had a office meeting uh, when I was in the corporate sector, uh, and it was about 20 of us, 20, 20 odd. Uh, so we went to a resort because we had finished a whole, um, you know, uh, very rough and very stressful uh, three months, and then uh, we did well in that. Uh, quarter or and and so we decided we'll go to a res resort and spend maybe two days there and so we went and when we went there uh you know it was just havoc you know the, everyone was like drinking and you know doing all kinds of things and um, uh, what hurt me the most was i began to see that members within our team uh you know men and women were involving in sexual intimacy especially you know in a time when you know i know that they have family and small children some of them have just been married uh and it was very painful to watch all of this and uh i, I remember you know they all were saying hey why did you even come if you if you have decided not to do this why did you even come and i thought to myself yeah why did i even come uh, uh but i respected my team leader my manager so uh, so i i went uh, but one thing was I did not involve myself in anything. They ridiculed, they mocked, all of that was all right. But I was assured. Now, the thing was, I was not married, right? I was I was not married. 
I was still a bachelor. Uh, and I could have, you know, I could have just had a couple of drinks. Nobody to question me. Uh, my parents also wouldn't have questioned me. I was not married. I, I could have involved with other women as well, but, but I knew that there are principles uh, that you know. After becoming a believer, there are certain principles that we must stand by, uh, and we must remember that God is watching us, right? So it's not like God is only in the church and we have to behave well in the church. No, uh, uh, and I remember after the whole. Uh, meeting and all this uh, sorry after the whole uh, outing that we had we went back home and uh, it, it was the following week when people came back to office and uh, there was this weird silence in our team right uh, those who were very friendly with each other were not talking to each other and so I asked them hey what's happening why is everyone so quiet and uh, you know I realized why they were quiet there was guilt in their heart because they went back home, probably they saw their wife and their children, and they remembered what happened in the resort, and uh, there was guilt. And they didn't speak to each other for a long time. And so, uh, you know, the book of Proverbs gives us a lot of instructions on how to stay away from, uh, you know, women and wine. It's only going to take us to a path of destruction, right? Especially in this time that we look at now where, you know, there's this new, there are new doctrines which say that it's okay to drink. The Bible doesn't say that we should not drink. Or the Bible does not say that we should not smoke. You know, all these excuses uh, which don't really make sense. But uh, I personally know of, uh, uh, you know, a couple of pastors uh, in the city uh, who are, who drink. Right? I personally know them. They say it's all right. It's all right because sometimes it's so much stress listening to all of them's problems and troubles and difficulties. You listen to them the whole time and we get stressed out. And so to relieve that stress you can have a couple of drinks. Uh, there are people, right? And, and they feel that it's okay. One pastor uh, mentioned to me that Mangi, I'll just get to you. I'll just say this. Uh, one pastor mentioned to me that uh, even Jesus drank wine. And so he related something to that and it didn't make sense at all. So we as leaders must set the example. We must set the bar high. Right. Yes, go ahead, Mangi. Yes, uh, Mangi, did you raise your thank hand? You. Yes. yes. Yes, I did. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize for that pastor who said that he has to raise the bar <laughs> for drinking. <laughs> and okay. my question is, uh, um, okay, I understand that uh, cultures and the, the, are different different uh, places. Uh, for example, here, all the wine, almost 90 or 90 or 90%, 95% of wine farmers are all believers okay. and there are more wine here than than water so people run out of water and there's wine everywhere and there's a culture here of for example lunch time when you're having lunch uh you, you love lunch with a glass of wine or when like there's a social gathering or believer just like, for example, a man, a group, men, uh, men's group in the church will meet. They will, the, 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 they will drink a beer or a glass of wine while while discussing or while while, while praying. So, how do we handle situation like those way? Alcohol yeah. Yeah, is not seen as, as bad, and drinking, uh, being getting drunk is seen in in this bad, but. Like social drinking is not it's not as bad. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that, that's a good question, Mangi. Yeah, I, I had those same thoughts. I had those same questions as well. But uh, but it's very important to look at what the Bible teaches us. Now, the Bible teaches us that once we are in Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit, we become the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, and when the when the Holy Spirit is in us, uh 
again, Paul writes in so many places, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. So my sin, everything is crucified with Christ. But uh, in terms of social drinking, now I understand that different cultures have different, you know, uh, 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 practices. And, uh, you know, I, I remember I was talking to uh, my brother who's uh, in a different country uh, and he was saying that they had a youth meet um, and they gave everyone a slice of pizza and a, a can of beer. And he was taken aback, uh, you know, uh, of course, he, uh, you know, he also used to drink earlier on, but he was taken aback. Why, why do they give this, you know? Uh, but everyone, it, it was, it was common. So he just, everyone just opened, began to drink. And, uh, and especially in a nation like ours in India, if that happens, it's like, oh, uh, you know, everything is done in secret in India, right? So it's not in the open. There are people, there are pastors who involve in drinking and all of it, but it's not in the open. In different in different countries, it could be in the open, right? Because it's a culture there. Uh, but the Bible says that we must avoid, uh, uh, you know, drinking and craving of alcohol. Uh, you know, uh, because it has adverse effects on us, and secondly, it it it's against God's will. It's against God's plan, right? So, one of the things, Mangi, we can do is to abstain from it. Now, you may have ten people coming to a youth meeting, right? Like what you were saying, a men's group, and they probably offer you beer. Uh, you can stay. You can set an example there, right? We you can say, hey, I I don't want to have this, right? No, so they're going to ask you why. So you say, okay, because this is what the word of God says, and uh, I want to keep myself holy. And they they will begin to, you know, you know, they will begin to ask questions. Where does it say don't drink beer, or where does it say hey, it's in our culture? Uh, you can give as much as replies you would like to prepare yourself that way, you know, uh, with the right answers. But uh, when you stand up or or step, you know, stand out from among the others. I'm sure out of the 10, at least one or two of them will think about it and maybe get back to you and say, hey, can you explain more about what you were saying, you know, about drinking? Because see, all of them are believers already, right? It's just that they don't understand this whole point of, you know, don't drink. So if you and I can set that example, we may be touching two or three people in the group, right? Now, if we look at the bigger picture, we may feel, okay, it's the whole culture of this nation. How can I, a one person, you know, change it? Uh, but you can make an impact where we are, right? Wherever we are. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I remember this whole, uh, you know, after that whole, uh, like I was sharing the whole uh, uh, holiday or you know, that, uh, you know picnic that we had with our team we came back everyone were so you know quiet and eventually what happened was there was you know, a couple of um, uh, tough seasons coming up so they were looking for an associate team leader like a assistant team leader and all of them said let Paul be the assistant team leader uh, you know so uh, it was quite kind of I I, I did feel you know uh, very sad the way they treated me but I went to God's word and I said God you will honor me you I am standing on your word I'm standing on your principles right uh, I was just probably 26 25 or 26 and I said God I'm standing on your principles right I'm standing and I know that you will honor me in front of the people in front of in, in my workplace you will honor me and all these guys in the team who were, you know, probably a seven years, eight years uh, in in the workplace, I was just probably a year or so in that company, just a year. They all said, let Paul be. Now, I was not qualified. I, was, I didn't even know all the processes. These, are, these guys are all eight, ten years in the same company. I'm just one year. They all said, let Paul be the team leader. They saw something that day. They saw that this guy is, you know, probably just 25, 26 years old. He, he can do everything that he wants to do. He can live, he can drink, he can, you know, engage with women. He can do whatever he wants, but he's not doing something. He's not doing all this. Uh, of course, in their drunken state, they didn't understand. But later on, 
probably when they went to sleep and they laid their head on the pillow, they thought about it and they said, how come he didn't do it? So, Mangi, it could be, you could be setting an example there, right? Uh, uh, remember that uh, if you stand for certain principles, others will learn from it. Others will, it will touch their lives. If not all 10 of them in the men's group, at least one or two of them would have noticed it. They will get back to you. That I assure you. And eventually, you can make progress. Uh, eventually, this whole thing of you know uh, having uh, uh, you know men's group or, or women's group and drinking together, eventually it can be stopped. Right? There are a lot of practices in our nation as well. Um, you know, in India, we had we went through a lot of things. Like I'm sure some of our folks will uh, you know remember this during times when you know. Uh, women should cover their hair and come for prayer. If they don't, they would be, you know, the people would get so upset. And there was a time when men and women had to sit separately, right? So we were very, uh, as a nation, we the, the, even now in certain places, the men and women sit separately. Women have to cover their hair. There are certain practices, right? But we can see there's a breaking off of all these things, right? You know, eventually, slowly, we're seeing that, hey, it's not about these practices. It's about, you know, living a good life, about honoring God, living in the Holy Spirit. All of this is important. Uh, uh, Mangi, I hope that answers your question, right? Uh, uh, yes, yes, you did, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard, but... Uh, I would encourage you, Mangi. Just you, you just do it a couple of times. Just uh, stand for your principles, and I'm sure they're gonna. May, maybe one or two of them, uh, if the Holy Spirit is working in them, the Holy Spirit will make them. And you know, one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to convict. So He will convict them, and they will get back to you, saying, you know, Hey, can you, you know, tell me why you didn't drink? What is it that you feel uh, about, you know, drinking? And I'm sure you'll be able to touch lives as well. Uh, say he has shared a couple of verses here. Thank you, Say uh, Isaiah 5, 5, 22. What are those who are mighty heroes at drinking wine and men of strength? Yeah. So there's there's a lot of uh, verses. Uh, the thing is, you know, uh, especially in corporate sector, we can't uh, really, you know, quote, uh, you know, Bible reference and give it to them. Uh, but we need to show it in our ways, right? In our life, our life will speak so much more as well, right? Yeah, thank you, Say, for sharing those. All right, let's go to uh, chapter 14. We'll just quickly go to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what we'll do is we'll go to chapter 15. And if we have time uh, at the end, uh, I just thought we'll go back to chapter 14. But uh, I, I was just thinking of customer relations, chapter 15. Um, uh, and let's quickly look at this chapter. It's a small chapter, but very important, right? Now, I'm sure most of us working in the corporate sector, uh, you know, we hear of this customer relations, right? Uh, for example, you, we call the phone service company and we tell them, hey, what's happening? There's no network uh, near our area. I'm not able to make calls. I'm not able to use my phone. Uh, I'm not able to listen to, uh, go to YouTube and listen or anything. And imagine this, uh, you know, network service provider, the, the guy who, or the person who picks the call says, okay, you have to wait, uh, you know, uh, nothing's very fast. And he speaks very rudely to you. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? At least for me, I would say, this, uh, hey, this company is, uh, you know, there's something wrong with this company. Uh, it's right. Uh, but that one person may have had a terrible day, he may have got up with a headache. His boss would have said, you better come to work, and he would have come, and maybe you're the first call. But remember that when we are working in an organization, whether it is church, whether it's the corporate sector, we uh, represent that organization. Jesus himself said, right? Uh, uh, you are the light of the world. So just as Jesus said, you know, he's the light. We are representing Jesus in this world. Right? So today, you just look at 
certain aspects of customer relationships and how we will also translate it in ministry and see how important it is to have good relationships with our uh, you know customers and even uh, if if it's church our church members right first point i'm sure uh, before going there uh, i'm sure those who are in church we have a team in apc bangalore we have a team called uh, member care right it's a dedicated team that cares for members right and we'll talk about why it's important to uh, have this kind of a team involved right okay first point in customer relationship respond quickly don't delay proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 and 28 yes could one of us please read that proverbs 3 27 and 28 proverbs 3 27 and 28 says do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so do not say to your neighbor go and come back and tomorrow i will give it i'll give it when you have it with you thank you yes thank you kennedy right so respond quickly don't delay what is extremely important in uh, customer relations is um to have a good rapport uh, responding taking priority of activities there will be times uh when as leaders in an organization or in a ministry we must be willing to respond put away other tasks and respond uh quickly right uh, now how do i translate this in ministry right as pastors we may be very busy doing many things you know preparing for sermons uh, praying and uh, you know uh, talking to people preparing for events and all of this now there may be somebody in the church who calls you and says pastor i'm having a difficult time uh, can you please uh, pray for me now the wrong thing to the biggest mistake we can do is say hey can is as a leader or as a pastor telling that person can i just call you back i'm just in the middle of something or i'm in the middle of some work and that would be the wrong thing to do why because uh what is important the people are more important right uh respond quickly uh be alert don't delay things when you have that um, even when you don't have the time put aside a uh, certain task and look after your people look after the people whom god has placed under your care right uh, i was reading this book it said that uh, uh, i i forget that whole name of the name of the book but the, the, there was this portion which says that uh, when the sheep don't get enough grass in one place they go to another place right uh, so god you know the lord jesus what did he tell peter he said feed my lambs feed them with the word be there for them be like a shepherd and so as leaders we must be able to respond to our uh, you know to our church members we must keep that as priority only after that comes events and programs and other uh, other responsibilities this is first of course after your family this looking after the people under your leadership is first now imagine we delay things or we you know uh, intentionally look at okay we know that this person has called and there's a problem and we don't call them back we call them after a couple of days or after 3 days 4 days what what does it show it shows that we are not responsible enough or we don't care for our people right so caring for our members caring for our people under our leadership is very important second point represent your organization accurately right now let's read proverbs chapter 25 and verse 13 proverbs 25 verse 13 proverbs 25 verse 13 yes one of us please read i'll read like the call of no in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger those who sent him so he refuses for he refreshes the souls of his masters yes thank, thank you. you thank you kennedy right 
representing your organization accurately right now when you are speaking to a customer in the corporate right when you're speaking to a customer represent your organization uh, correctly okay this is what we stand for this is what we do uh, uh, the next point says don't make false promises we'll get there but uh, be a faithful messenger right who represents the organization accurately now i will share this this happened once where uh, many years back this this ministry right uh, 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 had you know they they we we were working with this ministry and this ministry said that we are a organization which helps in uh, you know uh, orphanages and children and poor people and all of this so uh, i remember I, I said okay hey uh, you know i i had no not much commitments i was not uh, married at that time so i said okay let me help this ministry and so i said okay every month i'll just how much ever i can i'll just bless you it would be a small amount but uh, that's what i want to do i'll bless you with a certain amount now a couple of months later uh you know they would they would come home to collect the you know the the offering or the money that was being contributed and then a couple of months later they uh you know as i began to speak with these uh, people i realized that you know they this 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 is a this organization was being funded by many uh you know organizations from uh, different nations as well but the person that i initially spoke to said you know we don't have anybody who support us um, we are just here and you know we are starting from small but later on i got to know that there are people from uh, you know australia and canada and america who are supporting this organization and i was really hurt because the first time i spoke to this man he put up a whole picture that you know this ch this children's home and off and the destitute children are uh, there's nobody there's no money at all there's no food uh, uh you know and uh, i did uh, promise to support them in a small way but what is it as a person he represented the organization in a wrong way and i told these people you know uh, the first person who came and spoke to me he said that we are not being uh, you know there was no food at times for the children and uh, there was there was no no one to support the organization even though we are a ch christian organization there was no no one to support then these people said no no we get support from other countries it's not like we've never had food uh and i told them you know the first person who said that you know he 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 represented the organization inaccurately and uh, of course i didn't stop the uh you know uh, contributing towards them but uh from then on i became careful right because i always make sure that i'm supporting the right cause in the right way right uh, don't make false promises next point right if there are times as leaders we can make promises which we don't intend to keep at all right now in these situations don't make those promises don't make false promises right it is true that sometimes there'll be situations when that happen okay uh, you know you probably have to visit a family you tell them hey monday 2 o'clock i'll come and meet you and they say okay uh, but if you know in your heart oh monday 2 o'clock i'll be somewhere else then don't make those promises right uh when when you're unable to deliver on a certain promise our integrity is questioned right so always make good promises now we may think okay how does this follow up for ministry yes yes it does it does uh, as leaders if you say to your team members let's meet at 5 o'clock and you yourself know that you can't make it at 5 o'clock i'll just give an excuse later i'll just say that you know there was traffic or you know i had other things suddenly there's a new meeting i have to attend um the, my boss is calling me if you know that don't make false promises right uh, it, 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 when you make certain promises try your best to fulfill it right 
uh, otherwise don't make promises don't, there's no point of making false promises right uh, this is one thing i learned um, you know in our church in mangalore we have a lot of elderly families right those who are retired and they expect us you know to come spend time with them pray um, and you know spend time with them because they're all retired their children are all in different countries uh, so there are times they've said no i can't i can't come right they really wanted me i said no i can't come uh, because i learned that making these false promises is not going to help anyone right and so now as a church they know that if if pastor says he'll come he'll come if he says no it's a no right so there's no false promises and so you know you gain a lot of trust from the people in your team uh, there will be times uh, uh, you know there are crisis situations so you send your best man out to handle the crisis or you yourself go right crisis situation happens uh, you know remember this one time uh, uh, some of them were upset with a, a youth leader right uh, and and the pastor was not involved at all this is not in apc somewhere else and the pastor was not involved uh, he said okay i uh, let them handle it but then a time came he had to step in he had to make sure that uh, you know the right solution has to be found for this problem and so uh, by the time he went and tried to handle the situation the situation was even worse than what it was in the beginning right so when we know that there's a crisis send the right people uh, the right man the best man to handle the situation right stay calm even when there are unreasonable demands proverbs chapter 20 and verse 14 uh let's read that proverbs 20 and verse 14 proverbs 20 and verse 14 proverbs yes 20. proverbs 20 Proverbs twenty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <clears throat> the customer, the cust, the customer always complains that the price is too high, but when he goes off and brags about the bargains he got. Yeah. So thank you, Kennedy. So just talking about, you know, uh, the unspoken rule: the customer is king. Now, when we look at, uh, you know, in the corporate sector. sometimes they make unreasonable demands right uh, customers may make un- they may say okay you you give this to me for 50% of the price right uh, uh, and we may get upset so what are you talking about how can i do that uh, uh, you know now the right way to handle these kind of place is to stay calm and uh, we can't say uh, you know i'm not running a uh, you know a uh, non-profit organization here uh, or i'm not running a charity home to just that's a wrong way to get back at people but let the customer speak stay calm even when they make unreasonable demands now there were times when even in ministry right you know that a person is wrong right there will be times you know this person is wrong he did something wrong and they want to speak to you and they say you know what this happened that happened and then all because of all these things i got upset and then i said this now as leaders we must learn to stay calm even when we know that the person we are talking to is in the wrong uh, is in the wrong and because of this person the whole problem is uh, going on stay calm right uh, we must understand that okay uh you know just shouting or getting angry and shouting at them is not going to resolve anything uh, stay calm right uh, stay away from uh, fights and verbal abuse all of this as leaders uh, you know that that is very important very very important uh, uh, there'll be times when our church mem- maybe people new people who come into our church and the ministry they may have unreasonable demands in the church as well uh now don't say uh, hey i'm not going to listen to you do you know how long this ministry is it's more than 20 years you're not when one year in this church how can you make no is listen to them and finally you make 
the dem- you make the choices you make the plans right you make the decisions uh, but stay calm through all of this time uh, just the last point if you have failed to deliver admit it apologize don't cover up right now this is one thing that we always want to do uh, in uh, in in apc is that uh, there are times we are unable to deliver there are times we feel okay uh, you know i could have done better in this area or uh, i could have done better in what was assigned to me uh, one thing is admit it i admit okay this is something that i should have done uh to apologize god uh, you know lord uh, apologize to your leaders apologize to the people who you're working with to the team and and then look forward to you know uh, improving and becoming better in whatever has been assigned to you uh so this was a small section a small chapter of customer relations uh, i just tried to you know translate everything even for ministry so that we can all uh, apply it in ministry as well so uh we'll bring this uh, session to a close any questions um and if you have any thoughts any questions and we can close and pray any questions all right okay let's close and pray uh, uh louis uh, would you mind if you can close and pray Okay Kennedy has raised his hand yes good I had a question yes I was going to ask you uh Louis uh, uh Kennedy has a question so uh, after the question you can I'm holding on to it thank you for giving me the opportunity okay I was asking can you talk about coding where people fall on stop when prices are high or no prices are low and then they have to sell to make a bigger profit Uh, sorry can you can you repeat that question please i didn't get that can you can can you give some direction where traders or organizations tend to hold stocks eh okay. when the prices are low and they sell them when the prices are high you know yeah it's holding yeah yeah so um yeah so regarding that look um here's what i think uh and uh you can also maybe ask other faculty as well but here's what i i feel right now in business right the whole uh, in the bible teaches us that business is to make profit right uh, uh you know the parable where you know this man uh, uh gave his servants uh, the money and he went away uh, but only two of them were able to you know make profit out of it and only one just dug it and kept it under the ground now there's a lesson and there's a reason why god said that right now as an organization as a business we want to make profits we business involves strategy involves planning um and so holding back stock and at the right time when you feel that you know um uh when the prices are high you can sell it for a little more extra money um i feel it's okay as long as we're not exploiting uh the people right uh as long as we're not saying okay uh, unless there is complete lack of resources and then you know, we are holding back and saying no only you know uh, until the stock market goes higher or until this price goes high i'm not going to give it out uh then i then i would be wrong but if there is resources available and you feel that maybe 2 years down the line this is going to value even more then i feel it's all right to hold and you know uh, sell when the rates are higher uh, but if there's nothing and the resources are lacking people uh, uh, you know public people in the uh, city or the country are lacking these resources they're going through difficult times and if we have and not you know uh, we're just keeping it in stock and not distributing it then that would be wrong right uh kennedy i hope that answers your question i'm not too much of a businessman but uh i hope that i just tried to answer it practically okay okay thank you thank you yeah, thank you thank you kennedy okay uh louis uh, would you mind closing in prayer please can we pray please yes go ahead but, but i would thank you for today's um teaching we thank you for pastor and we thank you for each one of us Um, Lord, I pray for the wisdom and the grace to increase our relational value um, in the midst of our organizations, in the midst of, of, of our church, in the midst of our businesses. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray 
for counsel on how to relate better with the ones you've put in our care lord in the name of the lord jesus thank you for this grace and for the supply of your spirit lord in the name of jesus we have prayed amen amen thank you louis amen. thank you everyone have a great day we will see you tomorrow god bless thank you god bless